Peter Tucker is not only a good mate of mine, but a Kimberley wildlife expert and a good fishing guide too. We do plenty of fishing together from our hometown in Broome, and there's some pretty unusual fish that get around this part of the world. So Pete, we've gone to these cyclone moorings now, what do we expect to catch off these? Well, there's only one fish we're targeting, Ian, and that is the uh, elusive triple tail. Right. And yeah. have they got three tails? They've got three tails. They certainly that have. That makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, they hang under these mooring boys. What we're going to do is present lures, get them as close to the mooring boy as we can, yep. drag it underneath the mooring boy, and if they are uh, in a mood, they will come out and slam these lures. He's coming out. He's looking at it. He's on it. Oh, he's a good fish. Move your lure now. Move your lure. Move it. Move it again. And again. And again. Got him. Well done. Ooh. Beautiful triple tail. Good angling, Ian. Can we go back? To yeah, the you'll chain. go back in the chain. You've got to keep. Ah, lost him. Done me the whole thing. That's that, fishing. <laughs> that's triple tail fishing. Triple tail are very timid, and once you've pricked one fish, they usually get spooked and refuse to eat any lure. So you'll have to head off to the next mooring. Of him. That's one of 16 species of sea snakes that you uh, can find along the waters of the West Australian coast. I'm not sure exactly what this one's called. Well, it's not called uh, Stephen or Bob. No, he's not I don't Bob like or Steve. It's probably Shawnee. Far out. But, uh, you can see him there, mm. extremely <laughs> venomous snakes, but fortunately, their, their, their fangs are uh, quite well set back in their head and they're quite small. So in order for them to uh, bite, bite a human being... They're quite, they're not like a normal snake as far, I mean I don't like, I really do not like snakes, I'm not quite comfortable with this, but mm -hmm. uh, if it was anybody else I wouldn't be standing here, because okay. I know you as a mate from, the, from town. Um, are there why are they so, is that so they can swim or? Well they've obviously designed over the over the millennium, you can see how they've got quite an elongated uh, body, it's quite flat down the bottom and, yeah. and his tail is a paddle. Yeah. And what they do, they're an air breathing, air breathing reptile, like right. all reptiles, so yeah. he has to surface and that's what he was doing just now, surfacing yeah. for air, and then he will dive down and hunt for uh, small fish and so forth in the reefs. And they're deadly. And, they, and oh yeah, they, if, I, if I was to be bitten or one of us was to be bitten, severely bitten now, we'd be in big strife. Right. Can I touch him? You can paint him, yeah, feel how... Oh, it's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wicked. And they've got a head like a cobra. Well, like most, most uh, uh, venomous snakes, they've got that triangular shaped head. That's where they're every, all the poison sacs yeah, are, sacs I suppose. and so forth, but that's just a, 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 a definite um, way of identifying a poisonous snake. Is now we've seen some yellow ones. Are they same deadliness? Yep, yep they're all, the, all they vary in, in their in their potency, but yes, they're all fairly deadly. Look at that, he's getting a bit aggro. So I might let him go now. Yep, no worries. Okay. Please, folks, do not try this at home. Pete is an absolute wildlife expert and has been handling dangerous reptiles for quite a while now. I can see two of them down there. He's right there now. There he is, come on. You can see they're much like a barra the way they play. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. Oh yes, they're just like a barra. They call them jumping cod is their other name. Yep. And they're recognised as actually a sports fish. You can see they come up to the boat, you get shelter in the, in the, in the boat there. Do we have a landing net on board? No, oh, just me. Gosh. Well hang on, he's got a lot of fight in him and he's well hooked, so... Okay. This was my first triple tail I'd ever encountered and I was impressed by the way it fought and leapt well into the air. In fact, it was not unlike a barramundi, apart from its colour. They love most lures, but red and white is a favourite, and prawn pattern flies is another favourite that they uh, will take, and that is what we call a triple tail or a jumping cod. Yeah. Now we're just going to get Ian to uh, handle it with great skill. Hang on, Ian. I don't know how you're going to do this with the net. It's alright, I'm going to belly him. Get him in the gills, even if you cut your hand. As always, come prepared. Not like me. Bring a net because these things have spikes on their spikes. There we go, Pete. 
Yeah, they've got some spikes on them, haven't they, Pete? Yes, they have. You can see they've got spikes <laughs> along their anal fins here, down yeah. along their uh, along along their uh, pectoral dorsals, um, the whole works. They're everywhere. They've even got even got sharp gill rakers. If you notice along here, if I was yeah. to run my hand along there, that's extremely extremely sharp. They're a very difficult fish to handle. You did a very good job bringing them in there with the comfort lift, as we call them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lovely fish and three three tails. Oh yeah. Hence the name triple tail. Rightio. If you were to uh, if you were to just pan on that, you'll see that it, you look like it has actually three tails. It does too. Quite a sought after fish here in Broome. It's recognised as a sports fish, and we've got the perfect day for it today. You can Is see that? how the, the weather is just. We've just got a glass off. They get under these mooring boys or any flotsam and jetsam, and uh, and in sometimes in big numbers. And if they're hungry, they they attack lure. And do they grow quite big? They grow a lot bigger than this year. They grow huge. And they're very much like a barra as well, Pete. They jump and everything. Which they have similar characteristics to a barra. Same same type of uh, feeding habits. They hit a lure hard. They yeah. always hit a lure on the on the um, on the uh, when the lure sinks, as opposed to when you when you're ah, pulling right. it. And uh, yeah, and then they slam a lure hard, and then out they come out of the water. Well, we better put him back. And I think so. He's been out, been out, and he's getting a bit warm. He'll uh, he'll make his way back to one of these boys or some whatever he might find uh, yeah. floating around. So yeah, yeah nice fish. Right. And. As you can see, very tough, <laughs> whereas opposed to a queenfish or a mackerel, which don't have any scales, they would have died that long So before. you get them on fly? Yes, or on... Would I get one on that? You would, mate. Put a hook <laughs> through that, put a two-hour hook through that dragon fly, and I'm sure you'd get some results. Amazing. Okay. Alrighty, see ya. Go on, off you go. If you're not a computer person, you can also get our fact sheets free from West Tackle stores. Well, the sun's gone down on another episode of Fishing Western Australia, and here I am stranded on a rock in the Kimberley. But you don't have to be stranded after the show's over. Remember to log on to fishingwa.com. There's everything you need to know to become a better angler. There's secret hotspots, there's fishing tips, there's detailed information about 35 different fish that you can catch in Western Australia. On our next episode, we've got an amazing Coral Bay special with some of the most awesome footage ever captured on film. Just like trout fishing. <laughs>